Mr. Topham Hatt came to all the engines with some terrible news. The worst news he ever had. Why are you here so early, sir? Thomas asked. Well, to put it simply, Thomas, we're in debt. In debt? Sir, what does that mean? It's mostly a financial thing, but when a company goes in debt, it means they don't have enough money. To put it simply, this railway is not making enough money to afford itself. Henry was confused. But, sir, what does that mean? Well, Henry, every successful company or railway needs enough money to be able to keep itself going. It's how we afford all of the trucks and coaches and equipment we use to do our jobs. We're not making enough money to afford them now. Well, sir, I think the problem is that there's not enough profitable red engines like me. James, how many times do we have to tell you that your color does not determine your usefulness? That sounds really racist, you know. Oh, uh, sorry, Thomas. I didn't think of it that way. I apologize. So does anybody have any ideas on how to make more profit? Oh sir, I know. What if we got some stuff from the mainland that you can't find here and then sold it here? Silly Thomas. Why would people come to Sodor for mainland goods when they can just go to the mainland? Sir, pardon my interruption, but maybe the problem is that this railway isn't getting with the times. Everyone was shocked, but they stayed quiet and listened to Edward. I mean, think about it. Most of the coal on this island is dirty because it comes from third parties, and most homes are still being heated by using fireplaces, all of which are extremely inefficient and bad for the environment. I see your point, Edward. This railway is indeed living in an older time, but how can we get with the newer times? Do you have any suggestions? I'm not sure. But the main thing is we should try switching the railway's power source to a different one that's better and more clean. And how do you suppose we do that, Edward? Percy does have a point, Edward. Most of this railway is stuck in another time. It's going to take a long, long time to be able to convert the entire railway into a more modern age. By then, it'll probably have changed even more. I agree, but as times change, technology does too. So we should try to keep up instead of not doing anything. Henry has a point. Why don't we switch out the old colding plant for some new sort of power source? After all, there are many different ways to get power these days. There's solar energy, there's wind energy, and there's even a new one called nuclear energy. I don't know a lot about it, but I know that it's supposed to be very clean. I'm late for my train. I think we should all think up our own ideas and then say them later. As Henry chuffed away, all the engines couldn't help but feel that each one of them were individually responsible for the debt that Sodor had been racking up. Is all this debt maybe my fault? Meanwhile, later in the day, Thomas was pulling Annie and Clarabelle to a station. 
but he couldn't help but feel that all of this debt and possible bankruptcy in the near future was somehow his fault. Thomas always loved interacting with the narrow gauge engines as he passed by, but today he was feeling too depressed and overcome with the feeling that he could be possibly leading the railway down into the dirt. He was so in his own head that he didn't even notice he had just passed a red signal. Thomas, stop! You've just passed a red signal! Oh crap, I did? I didn't even realize. I'm so sorry. I'm stopping now. Thomas, it doesn't take the IQ of a toddler's brain to realize that you aren't doing too well lately. What's wrong? I just feel like the island going into debt might be my fault. I mean, I'm the one who's always messing up. Well, I can't mess this thing up. I have to get this train to the station on time! And so Thomas started speeding down the rails as fast as his wheels could carry him. It was very exhausting, and he felt like he was going to throw up at any moment. But he pressed on. He didn't want to make this island go into any further debt anymore. I can't be late! I can't be late! Thomas puffed faster and faster, determined to make it to the station on time. At last, Thomas finally arrived at the station. Donald was waiting for several minutes. He was getting impatient and didn't even think Thomas was going to show up. But Thomas looked really exhausted. Uh, Thomas, are you okay there, bud? No, I'm not okay, Donald! Does it look like I'm okay? I'm exhausted and I'm ten minutes late! Jeez, you need to calm down, Thomas. I know you might be upset and everything, and that's perfectly okay, but you don't need to take out your anger on me. I just want to know what's wrong with you. I'm sorry, Donald. I just... I'm always messing up on every job I get, and I feel like the island going into debt might be my fault. I feel like I'm the one that's dragging us all down into the dirt, and I'm the reason that we might eventually go bankrupt and have to move to some other railway. Or, God forbid, even be scrapped. Thomas, these feelings that you're feeling are completely natural. In fact, I've heard lots of engines are feeling that way. It seems like this whole thing is really a group responsibility. We all are responsible for the debt, and so we all have to volunteer to fix it. And so Donald chuffed away, leaving Thomas with those wise words to think about. How could they all pitch in to help the island? That was something for another day. Hmm. Group responsibility. Jeez. I sure hope Thomas will be okay. Meanwhile, Sir Topham Hatt was having a very important business meeting with a whole bunch of different people. Everyone? I have called you here because you are all very wise when it comes to financial problems. My railway is going through massive debt and I need your help. So, are there any ways that we can make more profit off of this railway? I'm all ears. The two business people were thinking, and then the businessman spoke up. I think the problem is that this island runs on way too much disposable fuel, which releases a lot of pollution. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. I have a suggestion. I'm the CEO of the British Nuclear Power Company. My suggestion is maybe you can supply your entire island with nuclear power, and maybe sell the excess power to other railways nearby. Hmm. Nuclear power, you say? Bill and Ben were at the quarry. It hasn't been busy as of late. Most of the quarry equipment had been sold off to try to scrape up some extra money to help pay off the debt, so the quarry hasn't been used a lot. Which didn't really matter, since most people couldn't even get any useful minerals from the quarry anymore. 
Rosie chuffed into the quarry with some trucks ready to collect more supplies to sell. She noticed that Bill and Ben weren't doing too good, so she checked in to see what was wrong. Hello, you two. How things going here? Not good. We aren't getting enough funding because people aren't mining any useful resources. We're probably the least needed place on the railway. Well, I certainly doubt that. So many other places are already going under and taking hits from the railway set. We don't even have Mavis to help us. Didn't she get sold to earn some extra money back? What? what? Oh, I guess you boys weren't informed. A big wave of sadness flew over all three engines. Damn it. Boko is always too busy now, so we have no one to help us. We're truly gonna be closed down and sold off. Well, I can't do anything about that. Sorry, boys. I have another turn to get to. And so Rosie chuffed away, the three of them feeling really somber about the whole situation. The next day, Thomas was at Knapford Station helping Gordon to arrange his coaches for his express line. While Thomas was feeling a little bit better from his wise conversation with Donald the other day, he was still feeling really down. He really wanted to find a way to solve the debt problem so that he wouldn't lose any of his friends and that the railway wouldn't go bankrupt. The constant pondering on how he could solve the problem, whether on his own or with help, it really got to his head kept him down in the dumps for most of the day. He wasn't his usual cheery self. This of course raised a lot of concerns around his friends. Okay Gordon, your train is ready. You can go now. Thomas, you've been seeming really down as of late. Donald told me about the conversation you had with him yesterday. It's not your fault the railway's going in debt. I know, but it feels like it is. I mean, I'm the one who's always messing up, I can't do anything right, and I can't even think of any solutions. Thomas, I've known you for so many years now, and I know that you always come out on top whenever you're having any problems. Just keep brainstorming some ideas, and I'm sure you'll think of something to help this railway. After all, you're one of the smartest little engines I know. Now I have to go. The express can't be late. I'll see you later, friend. And so Gordon chuffed away with the express as Thomas pondered the wise words of the big blue engine. Gordon's right. I have to do something. I'm gonna go find Sir Topham Hat. Meanwhile, Percy was taking several beer tankers to a brewery. His mail route had been given to James since he was bigger and faster, and Percy didn't like this one bit. Percy, you seem really angry. What's wrong? Percy backed up, rage fueling in his eyes like it never has before. Oh, I don't know, Duck! Maybe it's the fact that I lost my mail route to some stupid big red engine with a big ego! Duck couldn't believe what he heard. Percy was never this angry before. Dang, I've never seen you this angry before. Losing your mail route must have really drove you over the edge. Oh gee, you think? I never would have guessed that! Thank you very much, Captain Obvious! Percy, you used to be so cheerful and carefree. This whole situation has changed you for the worse. You're right, Duck. I'm sorry. I just hate taking these stupid alcohol tankers when I could have been doing my mail. 
This whole debt situation has just really messed up all of our lives. I can't do the jobs that I like anymore. We're all forced to work so many hours a day. And even at night, it's just exhausting. Besides, what'll happen if the railway shuts down? Don't worry. The Great Western Railway has millions, possibly billions of dollars in debt, and it's still running great. Well, well, I guess that helps me feel a little bit better. It just tells me that the railway won't shut down for a while. Anyways, I gotta deliver these beer tankers. Thanks for the talk, Duck. Alright, see you next time, buddy. And Percy chopped away, relieved that the railway wouldn't shut down for at least a couple more months. Later, Thomas found Sir Topham Hatt and proposed his idea. Sir, I think I have an idea on how we can save the railway. We need to advertise the railway on TV so that more people come here. Edward said how we should get with the times, and this is a way we can do that. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. Wow, Thomas, that's not a bad idea. I actually have a couple of ideas of my own. I need you to bring me to Tidmouth Sheds tonight so I can tell everyone the idea on how we can save the railway. Yes, sir! All of the engines were very depressed today. Sir Topham Hatt had a big announcement coming. Everyone was sure that he was going to announce the closure of the railway. Everyone was so quiet, just waiting for him to show up. Except for James. Oh god, I just know they're gonna scrap me first. My splendid red paint isn't good enough for this island. James, what have we told you about racism? I'm sorry guys, I think I have an ego. Then everyone heard an all too familiar whistle. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth Sheds, but he was very happy. He didn't look depressed at all. Everybody! Sir Topham Hatt has a solution to the debt! We're not going to be scrapped and thrown away! As Thomas said that, Sir Topham Hatt stepped out of his cab and approached all of the engines. Everybody, I have found the solution to this railway's debt problem. We will squish this debt into the ground and we will no longer have financial problems ever again! But sir, what's the solution? Did you take my suggestion? I sure did. Oliver, bring them in! Oliver then chuffed in, pushing five yellow tankers with a very strange symbol on them. Everybody, these tankers are going to be used for a new nuclear power plant! Toby then chuffed out of the shed. He was listening the whole time. He wasn't too pleased with this news. What did you say? Nuclear power plant? Uh, yeah, nuclear power plant. Is there a problem, Toby? Sir, can I speak to you alone? 
Sure, Toby. Everyone, get back to your work. And so Thomas chopped away, leaving Toby to talk with Sir Topham Hat. Sir, nuclear power is very dangerous, and the waste is very dangerous to transport. Are you sure about this? Toby, you can't be scared of everything all the time. We have to do this to save the railway. No matter the danger... This pissed off Toby to his core. Well, sorry, I'm looking out for this island and its damn inhabitants. Well, this fucking sucks. Hey, Toby, isn't it amazing that we're all not gonna be scrapped and the railway can continue on? At what cost, Henry? That nuclear power plant is dangerous! It's gonna cause nothing but trouble! Well, damn, if you feel so strongly about it, why don't you tell Sir Topham Hat? Oh, I did tell him. He didn't listen to a word I said. Just leave me alone, you pathetic Welsh call addict. And so Toby chuffed away, fuming with rage, just knowing that this power plant could cause nothing but trouble. Henry was feeling really hurt by his words, but he chose not to say anything, to be the bigger person. Later on, Thomas was assigned to pull a train of supplies to the nuclear power plant construction site. He hadn't seen the place before, but he was very interested to find out what it looked like. Okay, Thomas, you can do this. Just pull the trucks to the power plant and get out of there. Stop holding back, you guys! This is important or you're all gonna be scrapped! The trucks never heard Thomas snap at them before, especially not this aggressive, so that immediately put them in their place. The train was heavy. Thomas wondered what was in there that was needed for the power plant, but he was too angry to even ask, so he just pressed on, ignoring all of his own questions. Meanwhile, Toby was also on his way to the power plant. The tankers were full of something. He couldn't tell what, and nobody told him, but he just didn't question for he too was also angry. God, I'm always put on stupid ass truck duty! Calm down, Thomas. We have to get there on time. Oh, shut up, driver! You're not the one who's hauling 200 tons of crap! Thomas blew his whistle angrily. He'd never been this angry before. Stupid trucks for the stupid power plant, stupid death, stupid everything. Uh, Thomas, are you okay? i never seen you this angry before. Shut the hell up, Toby! Go back to your shed! Thomas's attitude really showed. This whole power plant thing really got to him. Thomas isn't acting himself. Maybe he's also on power plant duty?
and so Toby chopped after Thomas, hoping that he would lead him to the power plant, but also to be able to comfort Thomas and make sure that he was okay. Soon they both arrived at the power plant, Thomas grunting with anger, and Toby still concerned for his friend. Holy crap! That is a huge building! What the hell are you looking at, Toby? HOLY CRAP! There, over the two little engines laid a very big building. Right in the middle of the countryside was the Sodor Nuclear Power Plant, with three giant cooling towers, four powerful energy grids, two office buildings, and a shipping department building. This place is enormous! Wait, why did they build it in the middle of the countryside? It's kind of a nice zoo here. You know, I guess you're right, Toby. Even though this is meant to save the railway, it is kind of an eyesore, especially in the middle of the beautiful countryside. As soon as the job was done, the two engines set off to go find something else to do. Meanwhile, Edward was boarding a passenger train at Ellsbridge Station. Thomas and Toby soon pulled in and decided to tell Edward about the power plant as Edward had always appreciated the beautiful nature of Sodor. I'm assuming you guys are here about that power plant situation? Oh yeah, Edward, we just got back from that place. It's a huge eyesore. Why did they have to build a power plant in the middle of the beautiful fields? Toby groaned. I honestly don't know. When I said that we need to get with the times to save this railway, this isn't what I had in mind. I'm gonna give Sir Topham Hatt a piece of my mind later. And so Edward shuffed away. Excuse me, me and my family came here to see the beautiful countryside and fields of Sodor, but that giant power plant is blocking the way, and it is very hard to hear with all that electric whining going on. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but that power plant is necessary to pay off this railway's massive debt. Edward overheard the conversation between the people at Ellsbridge, and it made him even more mad. How could they just put that giant eyesore in the middle of the beautiful countryside, which is what most people come to Sodor to experience? This power plant better be worth it. That area was my favorite spot of all of the nature on Sodor. Took you long enough, Edward. What was with the holdup? I'm sorry, Oliver. But I just found out that that nuclear power plant was built in the middle of the countryside. That's gonna completely ruin the tourism here on Sodor. I know what you mean, Edward. I was assigned to be the main engine that takes away the nuclear waste from that power plant. So I have to be there almost every single day for the rest of the year. Well, I look at it this way, Mr. Oliver. At least this way, the railway won't shut down and we get to continue working together. Ha! <laughs> you always do find the positive in everything, don't you, Toad? See, Edward, why don't you look at things from Toad's point of view? At least we get to work together even longer now. You know, I guess Toad has a point. I guess he is always looking at things backwards. <laughs> That's a good one, Mr. Edward! And so Edward chuffed away. Although the power plant was an eyesore, 
He was at least glad that he'd get to do more work, and the railway would continue flourishing. Alright Toad, we gotta get some rest. Tomorrow they're activating the power plant, so we've got a lot of work to prepare for. Yes sure, Mr. Oliver, sure. Today was finally the day that the Sodor nuclear power plant would be turned on. Oliver, Toad, Edward, and Toby were patiently waiting. As the power plant whirred to life, Edward and Toby were already ready to go. Woohoo! Now let's get out of here, Edward. Wait, you guys aren't going to stay for the celebration? Do you not like the power plant, Mr. Toby? No, he doesn't, and neither do I. And so both old engines chuffed away, really not liking the new direction this island was going in. Although it was for the best, it wasn't from what they remembered. They just couldn't accept that sometimes change is necessary. After a month of the power plant operating, things on the island began to turn around. Thomas finally got to operate his branch line most of the time again, and James was back to doing his regular goods trains, even though some of them gave him flashbacks. All of the engines weren't scrambling around to get certain jobs done anymore, and they finally got the rest that they always needed again. No more long overnight shifts out of nowhere, and they actually got to do the jobs they wanted to do again. Gordon was back to just pulling the big express, and not doing any other measly truck duties that he looked down upon. As for the jobs Oliver did before the nuclear power plant was built, Sir Topham Hatt was able to buy some new engines to fulfill those jobs. Duck got along really well with the new engines, and things were looking really bright. One night, Henry was on to pull the flying kipper. He was very excited to finally pull it once again. Are you ready, Henry? Oh yes, I'm so excited to finally be back on the Kipper route. It's been so long since I pulled it. But then Percy chuffed up behind Henry. Wait up, Henry! You've got some extra stuff you need to carry! Percy then coupled up what looked to be four nuclear tankers meant for the power plant. Um, what's in these tankers? And why do I have to take them? These are extra uranium rods for the power plant, Henry. I need you to take them there on your way to Manchester. Are you kidding me? Fine! And so Henry angrily started up. Although he was on power plant duty, especially in the middle of his favorite train to pull, he figured he would just suck it up and do it anyways, since it was on the way to his final destination anyway. Come on, Henry. The nuclear power plant is on the way to Manchester, so we can just stop there and drop off the rods. I guess so, driver. I just didn't want it to be on my favorite train that I pulled. As Henry sped through the night, he had many mixed feelings on this route. He was glad to be on the Kipper run again, but why did it have to be interfered with some nuclear power plant business?
We're making great time, Henry. Same as always. Keep it up. God, that tunnel gives me flashbacks. Soon Henry arrived at the power plant and started to slow down. Hello? I've got a delivery here for the power plant! Then the workers in hazmat suits unloaded the uranium rods and brought them into the power plant. About 30 minutes later, Oliver was tasked with taking away the spent uranium rods while Henry went back on the Kipper route. Good luck on the Kipper route, Henry! Safe travels! Henry was so irritated he pretended not to hear Oliver. Oliver just shrugged it off and decided to start on his journey. The trucks that were carrying the spent uranium rods had lead blankets on top to prevent radiation leakage, as the spent uranium rods are much more radioactive than full uranium rods. Why isn't Toad here, Oliver? Oh, he's over getting some well-deserved rest. As Oliver chuffed through the night, the trucks kept complaining about the uranium rods, but Oliver told them to shrug it off, as they would be done soon. We don't feel so good, Oliver. Come on, guys. Just a little bit further. Down the line, Toby was stopped in the middle of the tracks because he had ran out of coal. Oliver saw this from far away and quickly applied his brakes. Toby? Why are you stopped here? Well, Oliver, I ran out of call. But Harry passed by and said he'd get help. Alright, I guess we'll just wait here then. The two engines waited patiently all night until the sun rise. Uh, Toby, I think something's wrong with the trucks. Oh no, what's wrong with them? Then Douglas chuffed in to help. How could you run out of coal in the middle of the tracks, Toby? And Oliver, what's wrong with your trucks? They don't sound- HOLY CRAP! What is wrong with them? I don't know, but we have to get them out of here quick! Oh no, 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 this won't do at all. Because of being left with radioactive material inside of them all night, the trucks had mutated. Some of the mutations were light, such as the skin being more flattened, while others were more noticeable, such as extra teeth growing or cancerous growths growing on the face. Sir, what's going to happen to these trucks? Well, we're going to have to scrap them. This is no condition for a truck to be working in and living. Sir, what about me? I was the one carrying the trucks. Oh, I looked into that, Oliver. Don't worry. You did absorb some radiation, but it's nothing too dangerous. You won't gain any strange mutations. You'll be completely fine. It didn't take long for word to come out about the trucks being scrapped. This really pissed off a lot of residents on Sodor, and they began to protest the power plant. This is an illegal gathering. Please disperse right now. You do not have the improvement to gather on Sodor government-owned property. The 
whole commotion could be heard from Tidmouth's sheds. But Sir Topham Hatt tried to cover it up so none of the engines would worry. Don't worry about those sirens. We're just doing a fire drill test at the power plant. Nothing to worry about. But sir, I can see and smell smoke. So obviously something- Henry, you need to lay off the Welsh coal. Seriously. Hey, you know I quit that shit a while ago! Anyways... So, until further notice, we're going to be increasing the power plant's production rate from 10% to 50%. Sir, that's bullshit. Yeah, I agree with Toby. Yeah, that's absolute bullshit! Yeah, you can't just do that! That power plant is nothing but trouble. Seriously, sir, you can't just do that. Obviously, this thing is a terrible idea, sir. You need sir, to tear it down! Sir, there's a fire, and you know it. He's right now. Us, obviously. Everyone, shut up! I know that none of you like the power plant, and I get it, but this is the most profit the railway has made in a long time, and I would like it to stay that way. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Sorry for questioning your authority, sir. It won't happen again, sir. Everyone was speechless after Sir Topham Hatt yelled at them. Except for James. I can't just let this stand by and happen. I have to do something. And so, James finally decided to take matters into his own buffers. He decided to enlist some help. The trucks were not happy to see him. They had all gotten the word that the other trucks had been scrapped. Their main informant was Scruffy. What are you doing here, you stupid steam engine? Why are you bothering us? Well, listen, first off, I'm very sorry for bothering you guys, especially after the situation you're going through. But I need all of you guys' help to take down the power plant. What? Listen, Steamy, we don't like your kind here, so you make this quick. Okay, first off, that was really racist. And second, I'm not trying to destroy it. I just need it to be not functional. And you want us to help you with that? What's in it for us? Well, I'm sure ever since those mutated trucks got scrapped, you guys have all been fearing for your life almost every day. With the power plant not functional, you won't have to worry anymore. As soon as Scruffy heard James' words, he was in. Well, that does sound nice. Yeah, and Sir Topham Hatt has really become such a greedy jerk ever since it was built. Oh, I can vouch you there. Yep, he's an asshole. Well, without the power plant, I'd be able to actually get sleep at night. And we wouldn't be fearing for our lives, and we'd also have way less work to do. Without the power plant, Sir Topham Hatt will need a new way to make money. You know what, Reddy? You have yourself a deal. We'll think up a plan and do it tomorrow. Alright guys, just remember, don't hurt anybody. I just want the power plant to be shut offline, so that he has to find an alternative to it that won't be dangerous. So, what's the plan, boss? I'll tell you guys tomorrow.
Any minute now, you're going to see a cheaper way day return, make an ordinary day into an extra special one for my good friends here, because the train brings people together. You hop on at one end, then speed away safely and smoothly with room to stretch out and move about. As it happens, the going's almost as good as the getting there, and it's so easy on your purse. Away day is an off-peak ticket, so it costs you less. Spend a day with someone you care for. It's much cheaper than you think because... ...of the train. Later, three new engines arrive, two of which Gordon recognized. Oh, Gordon, you're still here. I thought you would have been sold off. Hello, Spencer and brother. Nice to see you, brother. How are you? Just then, a fourth new engine jumped in. Yet another one Gordon somewhat recognized. This engine looked very similar to Henry, except he was a different shape, but they were both green and had the number three. Who are you? Oh, hello, Gordon. As soon as the engine spoke, Gordon recognized the voice. You may not recognize me, but you might know me as Engine 98462, though I am named Alpha now. And so, Gordon started to conversate with the four new engines. Meanwhile, Thomas was out enjoying the day on his branch line, very excited for whatever was coming up next. Thomas, slow down! You are going much too fast! Way too fast! Oh, calm down, you two. It's not like I'm the fastest engine on the island. Imagine if you were stuck to the fastest engine. That would be a pain. Thomas was then uncoupled. Wait! Thomas, where are you going? Oh, I'm going out to explore a little bit. This train doesn't leave for another hour, so I'll be back. Don't worry. But Thomas, you need to wait! Thomas was then stopped by a signalman. Thomas, I have word from Sir Topham Hatt. I need you to go shunt the train ready for James. Oh, come on! Why do I have to do it? Listen, buddy. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Now go there before you get in trouble. You don't want to lose your branch line again. Fine. Thomas then arrived. He was to push some gunpowder and stone so that it was ready for James to pull. Thomas, hurry up, you stupid little tank engine! James was trying to put up an act, but it still pissed Thomas off. Listen here, James. If you want this done, do it yourself next time. I'm not helping you. And so Thomas chuffed angrily away, back to get Annie and Clarabelle. God, why does Sir Topham Hat always put me on stupid-ass truck duty? I'm useful and I'm special too! I should be getting regular trains! Alrighty, Toad. Are you ready to have another one of your own adventures? You haven't had one since that time you broke free from me and started moving forwards. Oh yes, Mr. Oliver, sir. I'm so excited to go with Mr. James. Alrighty. You boys remember the plan? Oh yeah, we remember the plan, boss. But the trucks had a different plan in mind. James, there's been a bit of a change of plans. I'm gonna need you to take this passenger train. Percy will come and take this train for you. Oh, how grand! I always love taking passenger trains and not stupid trucks. Wait, what? That little green booger's gonna take us! Goodbye, trucks. Have a good time with Percy. Don't ram him into tar tankers like you did me. As James chuffed away, eager to finally be back on passenger trains, 
Percy chuffed in to take the train away. Hey Oliver, I'm here to take the trucks away. This is the one, right? Yup it is. Good luck with Percy, Toad. Safe travels. Alright guys, new plan. We're gonna do the same, but with Percy. Alrighty, Mr. Percy, let's go. Alright, Toad. The truck's plan was going to be put into motion soon. They didn't trust Scruffy's word, especially since he had been torn apart by an engine before, so they decided to take matters into their own wheels. Meanwhile, Edward was waiting for a passenger train to board so that he could take them away. He could see the nuclear power plant from here, and he would always scoff when he saw it. James then arrived at Ellsbridge. Toby was there. Oh, hey there, Toby. How's it going? Oh, hi, James. How's it going? Percy then approached Gordon's Hill. This was the part he was very worried about, as he was small and not very strong, but he was determined to make it up the hill. Alright, now! The trucks then jerked and the coupling broke. Then they started rolling down the hill. Oh no, not again! The trucks pushed him faster and faster. On, on! Toad rocketed through other stations. The station master then warned the other stations. Clear the lines! There's a runaway train! Look out, Mr. Oliver! Toad! Faster! Faster! Pump Oliver! Push him! Crash into the nuclear power plant! Boop! Mr. Oliver, my brakes aren't working! What are we gonna do? James and Toby were still talking at Eldridge when Oliver then rushed through. Get away from the power plant! Get away from the power plant! Wait! Bobby, where are you going? I have to save Henrietta! Toby then bravely chuffed in the direction of the power plant to try to save Henrietta. Meanwhile, James quickly reversed in the opposite direction, determined to get away. Edward started pulling out of the station. Everything was happening all at once. Goodbye, Toad! The sky turned a deep red, and Edward slammed down as fast as he could, determined to get away from the explosion. Then the final reactor exploded, and the shockwave was enormous. Meanwhile, Thomas was chuffing away as fast as he could. He forgot to get Annie and Clarabelle, but he couldn't stop now. Come 
this! We've got to get out of here now! The driver went about hanging in car though! We can't go back for them! We've got to save ourselves! Thomas backed up into the shed and shut it tight. Down the line, Percy had managed to get away from the blast with Scruffy. Edward felt like his wheels were going to kill him, but he kept chuffing, eventually making it to a station. With all the engines now in a safe place away from the blast, there was no telling how much radiation was leaking throughout the island and how much they'd been absorbing. All they had to do was sit there and wait. Gee, I hope everyone's okay. Percy, I honestly did not intend for any of this to happen. I'll admit, we had a plan to cause some trouble, but I didn't think they would turn on me and cause something on this scale. Look, that doesn't matter now, Scruffy. What matters is getting out of here. James had managed to get away from the blast too, though he felt guilty for leaving Toby behind and not trying to convince him to go with him. Toby... Attention residents of Sodor, this is an emergency alert system message. We regret to inform you that a catastrophic incident has occurred at the Sodor nuclear power plant. A massive explosion has resulted in the release of dangerous levels of radiation into the surrounding area. Your safety is our utmost priority. For your safety, please follow these important instructions. Stay indoors, immediately seek shelter indoors. Close all windows and doors, and seal any gaps to prevent the entry of outside air. Turn off ventilation. If you have a central heating, ventilation, or air conditioning system, turn it off to minimize the intake of outdoor air. Stay informed. Tune into local radio stations for updates and official instructions. Do not use your phone unless it is absolutely necessary to keep lines open for emergency communications. Do not evacuate. Stay where you are unless instructed otherwise by local authorities. Evacuation routes may be unsafe due to the radiation levels. Protect yourself. If you have access to a basement or lower level room, move there. Use any available materials, such as blankets or clothing, to cover your nose and mouth to reduce inhalation of radioactive particles. Do not consume local food or water. Avoid consuming any locally grown or produced food and water until authorities confirm it is safe. Keep calm. Try to remain calm and reassure others, especially children, while awaiting further instructions. Emergency response teams are on their way to assess the situation and provide assistance. Please remain patient and vigilant. We understand this is a highly distressing situation, and we are doing everything in our power to address it. Your cooperation is crucial for your safety and the safety of others. Stay tuned for further updates. Your safety is our priority. Rebecca. So what are we gonna do, driver? Well, Thomas, we've gotta stay here until someone comes and finds us. We're stuck here. Oh, so, Scruffy, you're saying that this wasn't your plan? 
and that they betrayed you? That's right, Percy. This wasn't the plan at all. We weren't going to cause the nuclear power plant to blow up. We just wanted to make it not functional. To think of all the lives that have been lost because of this. We've lost some great friends. Like Rebecca, Oliver, Toad. But we have to get out of here. Let's go try to find some survivors. And find a way to get off the island. The more time we spend here, the more radiation leaks out from the power plant. Where do we look for survivors, Percy? Anyone who was near the power plant is pretty much dead. I'm not sure, Scruffy. Maybe we should look- Wait a minute! Didn't Thomas have to abandon Annie and Clarabelle for a bit because he had to bring you guys? Wait, you're right! We have to go back for them! You're right. We have to take the long way around because we don't want to go near the power plant. Maybe we can stop by Farquhar and see if anyone survived at the quarry. Who knows what we're gonna do without Oliver and Toad. Yeah, they were some great friends, weren't they? James was stopped at a station, letting all the survivors take shelter in the building. God, I, I hope Toby's okay. I wonder how many of my friends survived. Alright James, we got word that Edward survived and is currently at Tidmouth Station. Let's head there now. Make sure to go slow. We don't know what's up ahead. James saw a hot air balloon flying through the air. Looks like people were already getting off of the island. Be careful, Edward. You don't want to fall into that pit. If an engine was going too fast, they'd most certainly get stuck there. I know, driver, I know. So you guys put out a signal on the radio, right? Yes. Hopefully other stations have survivors and will respond to us. God, look at the damage this has done. I don't even recognize this place anymore. Come on, Gordon. We've gotten word that there are survivors out at another station. Let's go try to find them. Okay, if you say so, driver. I just hope my friends are okay. As Gordon shoved through the night, he was constantly being cautious, making sure to not bump into any danger. Hey, Edward, do you hear that noise? Um, not really, driver. What do you hear? Wait! Gordon! Don't go that direction! What? Don't! 
go that direction! Delighted Snimok. Capiro Bush. Driver? What happened? Driver? The Geiger counter in Gordon's cab was going off the charts. Without a driver to stop him, he kept speeding and was going towards the site of the power plant. Jeez, who knows where Gordon's heading, or what's gonna happen to him. We can't focus on that now, Edward. We have to get out of here. Let's go try to find some more survivors at another station. Alright, I can see the sun is starting to rise. Hopefully that'll get rid of this red sky. Remember to go slowly, Edward. You don't know what sort of dangers could be up ahead. Henry? After a long night of chuffing, Percy and Scruffy finally made it to the Farquhar Quarry. They were hoping to find some survivors, or anything that could help them. Percy chuffed into the far side of the quarry, and found what he was looking for. Rosie, is that you? Rosie had managed to survive the blast due to the quarry being far away from the power plant site. Percy? I thought nobody would find me here. I managed to get Annie and Clarabelle from the station, but I ran out of coal and got stuck here. Thomas left us at the station to try to go do another job. But ever since the power plant exploded, we haven't heard from him. Can you please take us to find him, Percy? Of course. The more the merrier, am I right? Yeah, plus, this kid knows his way around the island. We'll definitely get you guys to Thomas. Well, you heard them. And so Percy backed up and coupled up to Annie and Clarabelle, leaving Scruffy right behind Clarabelle. And then the four set off to try to find Thomas. Don't worry, Rosie. Once we get to the next station, we'll send somebody to bring you a shipment of coal so that you can at least get further away. Alright, Percy. Thank you. Safe travels! I hope Percy will be okay. What was that noise? What are you- what? <laughs> First down, Bridge Revision. Verstil pod verstel. Sail skoro pod cerpit kra. Rosso. 
Minyamos ven pos violet. The top continue nibble the zel nav on penentine in this day. O clergyet is last died national city to radio slav the sastrava. Tak i govoriš, tovariš. Unaware of what just happened at the quarry, Percy chuffed down the line to try to find Thomas, as to fulfill Annie and Clarabelle's request. Percy, are you sure you know where you're going? We seem to be lost. Hey, why don't you two give the kid some slack? He's the reason that I'm alive right now. So Henry, how did you end up surviving? I'm honestly not sure, Edward. I was out doing some jobs when all of a sudden I heard an explosion and then I sped in the opposite direction. I hope all my friends are okay. Well, you said that you saw Gordon pass by last night, right? So he's probably gonna be okay. Well, yeah, but he was heading in the direction of the power plant site. I'm sure he'll be okay, Edward. Percy continued to chuff through the night. The ashes of the sky made it hard to see, but he kept on going. WHAT THE HELL IS THAT?! WHAT IS IT, SCRUFFY?! WHAT IS THAT THING?! I CAN'T SEE IT PROPERLY! Percy chopped faster and faster, the creature right on his tail. Scruffy could see it coming closer and closer. As Percy sped down the line, the noise of him and the creature's chase woke up James, who was sitting in a nearby siding. Was that Percy? And... Oliver? Percy, it's catching up to us! I'm going as fast as I can, Scruffy! Just calm down! The creature then slowed to a stop as Percy sped forward to his demise. I'M GONNA CRASH!
All right, I think that monster's gone. I don't think it can see. Percy, are you all right? Percy? Thomas had now been stuck in Tidmouth Sheds for almost four days. Nobody was coming, he thought to himself. Would he ever get out of here? The way he saw it, he was just a small blip in the vast giant's island. The chances of someone finding him were very slim. <coughs> Thomas thought he heard a noise. He looked out of the shed's window and saw what looked to be all of them. Driver, what is that thing? I don't know, Thomas, but keep quiet. At least that thing can't get to us. The turntable doesn't work without somebody to- But Thomas spoke too soon. The monster sprouted six red legs and walked across the turntable. Thomas shut his eyes and barely said anything. He didn't want to alert the beast. It appeared to be using its steam and its whistle as a sort of echo location to try to find something. The monster didn't find Thomas. But he stayed quiet for a long time. Down the line, James's coaches were full of survivors. He was ready to get off of the island. His driver and fireman had a plan specifically to get off. Although James didn't know, he imagined it had something to do with the docks, as a plane couldn't carry an engine. As James chopped by Dry Off Station, he noticed some aircraft that he didn't recognize, some of which had a strange logo on them. Hey driver, what's that logo on those planes? James, I think that's the logo for the Soviet Union. Why are the Soviets here on Sodor? Does it have to do with the power plant? I don't know, James, but we've got to get out of here as soon as possible. Okay, driver, what's the plan? Simple. We're going to take a ship from Brendam Docks. If Cranky's still alive, hopefully he can load you onto the ship. That way, we can all get off of the island safely. But, Driver, what if Cranky isn't there? Don't worry, James. We're gonna try to use some of the other cranes. We'll, we'll find some way to get you onto the ship. Nobody's getting left behind. I hope what you say is true, Driver. Not a lot of people made it out of here alive. Let's go, 
The monster couldn't chase James as it ran out of coal. So we could move in other ways. Diver, what's that? We're heading right towards the power plant site! Diver, what do we do? Okay, James, on the count of three, you're gonna slam down your throttle as fast as you can so we can get out of that radioactive zone. Driver, are you sure that will work? I have no idea, James, but it's our only shot! Now do it! While the driver and fireman were protected in his cab, James absorbed thousands of rads of radiation all at once. <laughs> driver, I don't feel so good! Come on, James, we're almost out! The monster eventually stopped chasing James. The radiation messed with its senses, making it hard to detect him. James slowed to a stop. While people in the coaches probably suffered many mutations, they couldn't focus on that now. James, are you alright? We barely made it out of that alive. No, never better. After a long trip back on the mainland, Boko had finally arrived back on Sodor. He didn't know what exactly had happened, but everything was a shock to him. The first thing he did was arrive at the quarry to check for survivors. Hello? Is anybody here? Boko just then heard some all too familiar whistles. Boko, is that really you? Bill, I'm glad to see you're okay. What happened here? The whole island is deserted and destroyed. Well, Sir Topham Hatt tried to curb the debt by making a nuclear power plant, but it ended up exploding. Bill explained. And where's Ben? Is he okay? Oh, Ben. <laughs> Poor Ben. What's wrong, Bill? Is Ben okay or not? Just come follow me. And Bill chopped backwards with Boko following him. Oh my god!
Ben had suffered horrible radiation mutations. He sounded like he was in constant pain. W what happened to him? He's all... It was mutations from the radiation. I guarantee you've absorbed some of it since you came back here. Why didn't you just leave him? You could have escaped. But he's still my twin brother, and I can't leave him behind. So I've been here with him ever since. Ben, don't say things like that. We're gonna get you some help. I promise. I'm so sorry for you guys. You guys can stick with me if you want. I think I can get us off the island. Please, Boko. I can't leave Ben alone. He's my brother. So tell us again, what exactly did this creature look like? Well, it looked like Oliver, but it didn't have a face. It had a giant gaping mouth with razor sharp teeth. And it had a sharp tongue that it used to rip Percy's jaw off. We're so lucky that Gordon happened to speed by and it started chasing him. I think the creature might be blind. Poor Percy, though. How did he end up in the ditch in the first place? Well, we were just chuffing along trying to get out of here. But then the creature started chasing us, and I guess the points weren't set properly. And he just crashed into it. Edward... If you go out, can you please try to find Thomas? We're very worried about him. We haven't seen him since the blast. Please, Edward. All right, I'll go. Henry, you stay here with everyone and try to think of a plan to get us out of here. I'm going to see if I could find survivors. And so Edward chopped away with three specific engines in mind. All right, Edward, who are we looking for specifically? Well, Driver, we're gonna try to find Thomas, Toby, and James. Hopefully they'll have anyone else with them that we can get off the island as well. But why only them? Driver, we don't have a lot of time. The longer we stay here, the more radiation we absorb. We're lucky that we're already far from the power plant site. Sometimes we have to make tough decisions like this. Just then, Edward found Toby, sitting alone. Toby, is that you? It's me, Edward! Are you okay? Toby, please answer me! Are you okay? I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. It wasn't my fault. Yes, it was, you worthless wooden piece of shit. It's all your fault. She's dead. Gee, I haven't heard from anybody. I sure hope Thomas is okay. And all of his friends. Oh, hello there. Can I help you, gentlemen? The motif is fresh, give me me. Attention residents of Sodor. This is an emergency alert system message. Radiation continues to leak out of the Sodor nuclear power plant site. 
the area has been severely contaminated and surrounding wildlife has begun to show mutations. Certain engines have also been reported missing, dead, or mutated. We understand this is a severely distressing situation. Please continue to follow these instructions. 1. Keep a loaded firearm nearby in case of any dangerous mutated wildlife. 2. Continue to prevent the entry of radioactive particles such as fallout into your home. 3. Only consume canned or preserved food that has not been exposed to radioactive fallout. Boil any water to at least 65 degrees Celsius to eliminate any contamination. 4. Do not under any circumstance. Attention civilians of Sotor. This is the Soviet strike and tragedy prevention team. Your entire island has been compromised with radiation contamination due to the incident that occurred a few days ago. A massive creature has been spotted roaming the island resembling the Great Western Railway 1400 class designation Oliver. We all ask you to comply with the SSTP to prevent this tragedy from spreading to the motherland. Failure to comply will result in civilians being dealt with accordingly. Signing off. 7. Keep children and other distressed members of your family or residents calm. We are sending hazmat teams into the radioactive zone to attempt to contain the site of the explosion to prevent further radiation leakage. Continue to listen into local radio stations. Your safety is our priority. How's Ben doing, Bill? I don't know. He's still just saying that one phrase. Kill me. Ben, no! We're going to get you help! I promise! Boko, this dock is empty! Where do you suggest we go? We should try Brendam Docks. Maybe Cranky is alive. He could help us get onto a boat. And how will we help Ben? Hopefully some doctors can treat his condition and reverse those mutations. Hear that, Ben? Toby, what are you talking about? What's wrong? I... I tried to speed to get to her, and... He is too slow. He couldn't save her. Um, Edward, you might want to take a look at this. What is it, driver? While Toby was mostly unaffected, his firebox had mutated a face. What is that thing, Toby? That thing has been bothering me ever since a day after the blast. Toby said, shuddering. Toby, it's not your fault what happened. Maybe you should tag along with us. We have better chances of surviving. And maybe we could find Henrietta. If you say so, Edward. And so Edward set off with Toby in tow, hoping to find Henrietta, or someone else. Edward had a specific destination in mind to check. As Edward chuffed through the countryside, or what was left of it, he saw ravenous mutated animals devouring each other, seeming like they were in so much pain. It was truly a terrifying and horrible sight. Eventually they arrived at Lower Knapford. Edward knew exactly where he wanted to check. God, I hope I'm right in this decision.
Jacoby, I don't think there's any survivors here. They would have responded. I think you're right. Maybe we should. The two of them heard an all too familiar whistle. Okay? You look horrible. At least I'm alive. The same can't be said for Rebecca here. She got caught in the blast. She's been sitting there ever since. And I've been stuck here. How long have you been like this, Thomas? I mean, your face, it's... About two days ago, I, I abandoned Annie and Claribel when the blast happened. And I, I couldn't go back for them. I had to take cover here. Please tell me, are they okay? Please. We did manage to find them. They're okay, but Percy is dead. Some weird monster ripped his jaw off. Let me guess. It looked like Oliver didn't have a face. Six giant red legs. How did you... I saw it wandering around here it almost found me but i stayed quiet and it couldn't find me i think it's blind thomas we know where annie and clarabelle are maybe you should come with us we're trying to devise a way to get off the island Please, I... I want to apologize to Annie and Clarabelle. And so, Thomas joined up with the three of them. So, what's that thing in Toby's cab? Why does it keep insulting him? It's a long story, Thomas. We'll try to explain it when we get back to our hideout. Shut up, it's not his fault. Toby, don't listen to it. Everybody had managed to set up base at a station. Toby was mostly quiet. The mutation was still berating him.
Gee, Thomas, Toby doesn't seem to be doing too well. I got to ask, how are you so calm through this whole situation? Well, I guess it's because I'm sure that after this is all over, we'll be able to return to normal life again, and be back being useful again. You really think that everything's gonna go back to normal? Douglas asked. Well, yeah. I'm sure that Sir Topham Hatt is somewhere trying to find us right now. Or maybe he's handling the situation. I know he's gonna find us. Well, I can tell that mutation hasn't changed you inside, Thomas. Well, yeah, but I don't think Annie and Clarabelle think that. I'm worried to go talk to them. I know they're just right there, but do they even think I'm still myself? I couldn't say. Just then another familiar whistle came, and a bright red engine with a familiar paint job came in. James, you, you survived? But how? It wasn't easy. This monster was chasing me and... I had to go through the radioactive zone to get away. Well, why don't you bunker here for now, James? Edward stopped by a scrapyard to collect some supplies. He was talking to the manager. Hey, what's in those barrels over there? Oh, that's waste from before the power plant exploded. We never got the chance to transport it away. Then Edward noticed a familiar sight among the rubble. It was the rusted and dead remains of a tractor. Excuse me, who is that right there? <sighs> Poor Trevor. We found him out in the wilds one day. He had these claws at the front of his chassis. Don't tell me the rest. I, I don't want to know. Edward chuffed away, knowing the one person he managed to save in all of his life was dead, and he couldn't save him again. Edward, you're back! Look here, James finally- Not now, Douglas. Everyone, I have news. I found Duck and Trevor. Duck was murdered by the creature and Trevor was shot. Poor guys. Henry, take care of Henry Netta for me. Toby! Toby, no! Thomas, get out of my way! No, Toby! I won't let you do this to yourself! Look at yourself! Look at what you were just about to do! Would Henrietta want this? You don't know her like I do! What would Henrietta do if she was here right now and saw what you were just about to do? You were just about to throw away everything that you and her have built together over all of your life! Are you really going to do that? Thomas... Thomas. Thomas. But this thing on my firebox, it's... Toby, do you really think some stupid mutation inside of your firebox is gonna change who you are? Inside, you're the same tram engine that we've all known and loved for so many years. That mutation inside your firebox doesn't define who you are. And that doesn't define your future either. What does define your future is your own actions that you do right now. Besides, look at me. So much bad stuff has happened to me, but I'm still kicking. Look at my face right now. Plus, look around you. So many of your friends are here. We're all here, despite everything that has gone on. And we will be. Through thick and thin, 
through radiation, through monsters. We're all going to be here for you, Toby. And we'll always be here, no matter what. You're never facing this alone, Toby. We're all in this together. And so, with Thomas's encouraging words, Toby backed away from the crane, back into his little spot. Everybody was so relieved. Thomas, that... that was huge. When did you become a psychiatrist, Thomas? Oh, it's just some stuff I learned from you guys over the years. It's nothing big. Wait a minute, I... I know that whistle! Come on! We've got to catch Gordon before that monster catches him! James, you're coming with me! But why do I have to go? Because you're a brave engine, James. You're strong, and you're courageous, and I need you. James, faster! We've got to catch Gordon! Thomas and James sped down the line as fast as they could. Okay, James! You're gonna couple up to me, and then we're going to get behind him and try to slow him down! Alright, Thomas! Let's catch this son of a bitch! Faster, James! Faster! Almost there! to couple up! James, brakes! Last Gordon finally came to a stop. Thomas! John! Oh! 
Don't worry, Gordon. We came here to help you, and that's what we're going to do. Just hang tight. We're going to bring you somewhere safe. I'm sorry, Gordon, but we can't bring the Express. Stopping you was enough for the trouble with it. We're gonna have to leave the people here. Don't worry, we can come back for them. Yeah, what James said. Now driver, get him uncoupled. Damn. Looks like somebody did a number on his driver and fireman. Thomas's driver and fireman climbed out of his cab and entered Gordon's cab. They pushed off the body of Gordon's old driver and got to his controls. Alright, James, you and Gordon are gonna have to pull me. It's better than me and you pulling him. I can't wait to see the look on everyone's face when we show them we rescued Gordon. No, James. You and I make a pretty good team. Feelings mutual, Thomas. I'm sorry for how I treated you before the blast. Don't worry, James. I forgive you. Let's just focus on getting Gordon back to Wellsworth. Back at Wellsworth Station, everyone was worried Thomas and James might not have caught Gordon. Until they heard their puffing, they knew that they were successful. Everybody, we're back! And look who we got with us! Whoa, you guys were actually successful! I'll be damned! You guys pulled it off! But he still has that horrid mutation on his face. What do we do about that? Don't worry, I'm sure there's some cutting tools here that can help him. Later that night, everybody was sound asleep, except for Thomas and James, who were waiting for Gordon's surgery to be finished. It's gonna be good to have him back, right James? Alright, administer the waking agent. <laughs> ah! Ah! Wait! I can see! I can talk! I thought I was dead for sure! Thomas? James? Is that you guys? Welcome back to the team, Gordon. Attention residents of Sodor. This is an emergency alert system message. We would like to apologize for the previous broadcast. An unknown Soviet hacker group hijacked our signals and took over our broadcast. The following signal will be encrypted to ensure no further hacking. The Sodor nuclear power plant site has been contained and no further radiation will leak out. However, current radiation levels will linger. Armed Soviet groups have been patrolling the island in search of survivors. Do not listen to anything they have to say. They are attempting to cover up this entire incident by executing anybody associated with it. This being everybody on the island. We however can confirm their reports of a massive six-legged creature resembling the engine Oliver is true. Please follow these instructions until further notice. 1. Turn off all lights and minimize sound. We have reason to believe the creature is blind and cannot see. 
however the SSTP can see. 2. Keep your firearms loaded and proceed to Brendam docks or any other areas boats can reach. Government officials are beginning evacuations which will end in 48 hours. Anybody not on the boats in 48 hours will be left behind. This includes engines. 3. Do not listen to any broadcasts that are not played from our signals. These are likely false instructions by the hackers. 4. Do not go to the boats. We can end it quickly and painless. 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 Your safety is our priority. Why exactly are you making us do this again? Just wondering. Do you want to be sent to Gulag in Motherland? No. Then you will ask no questions! Boss, it's coming. All tanks prepare to fire! Uh, Mr. Soviet train, sir, we, we don't have any heavy artillery shells for the cannons, so we can't really- Use the tanks, then! <laughs> Open fire! <laughs> Bring it on, you freak! The next morning, Thomas and James were catching Gordon up on everything that had happened. So that's basically what happened, Gordon. So, everyone's either dead or mutated, and we have to get off the island before the Soviets find us? Yep, pretty much. Lots of good friends have been lost, and the radiation is getting worse. And several others are still missing. But, do you guys have a plan? Oh, of course we do. We're going to share it later. And I swear, we are going to get off of this island dead or alive. Later, once everyone woke up, Thomas started to share the plan. Alright everyone, so here's what we're going to do to get off this island. They're evacuating people and engines at Brendam Docks for the next 36 hours. If I'm correct, Brendam Docks should be mostly untouched by the blast, so Cranky should still be fine. He can load us onto one of those cargo freighters, and we can get off of the island. Are you sure that will work, Thomas? What if the creature shows up? We won't have to worry about that, because we're going to split into two groups. Gordon and Henry, you two are gonna lead them. Alright, Thomas. Well, I am the strongest. I just hope you know what you're doing, Thomas, and that we can get to Brendam Docks in time. Annie, Clarabelle, again, I'm so sorry that I left you guys before the blast. Both Annie and Clarabelle refused to talk to Thomas, giving him the cold shoulder.
guys, really, I, I'm really sorry. I didn't want to leave you guys to die. I worried every second I didn't know you were okay. We're almost there, Henry. Keep it up. So Douglas, what are you gonna do when we get to our new home? Ah jeez, I don't know Edward. I just want to forget that my twin brother is dead. Once we get to our new home, I promise I'm going to be much more compliant and willing to do work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are these boats doing here? Oh no, I think the Soviets are already here. Now what are we gonna do if they're blocking the way to the cargo freighters? I guess we're just gonna have to try. We're gonna have to try and push through. That sounds like a death wish, but it's our only option. We have to get out of here now. You're damn right, Gordon. Now let's go! Will you hurry up and get me loaded onto that ship, you pathetic crane? Can you stop being a stuck-up snobby bastard already, big city engine? I can't go anywhere because I'm bolted to the ground, so I'm probably gonna die here! Just hurry up, I have to get back to London. Well, it seems like Cranky is alive. Alright, now let's all get out of here. You know, it doesn't seem like the Soviets are here at all. I wonder why that is. Maybe they all left after they realized how dangerous this place is. I highly doubt it, Gordon. I could swear I heard tank firing earlier. How did you hear that, Thomas? Well, more than just my eyes mutated. My hearing is way more sensitive now. Cranky, we need you to load us onto those cargo ships. We're getting the hell out of here. What is it you think I'm doing, Steamies? Let me get these engines on here first. 
Um, the tanks are here, so I know I was right, but they don't seem to have anyone in them. They would have fired on us by now if that was the case. So what are you saying, Thomas? Do you think maybe the Soviets left their equipment here? I don't think so. Those things cost millions of pounds. I don't think they would just leave them here. Frankie, how much longer till you can load us? I'm your wheels already. The last boats are pulling in, so I'm gonna start loading you guys right now. Wherever we end up after this, I just hope it's better than here. I'm sure it will be, Gordon. It's not like there's any other places that are chock-filled with radiation and mutated monsters. True, but I'm still going to miss our old life. Gordon, at least you're able to be fixed from your mutations. Thomas, James, and Toby still have lots of surgeries they're gonna have to go through. You can't hide from yourself, Toby. Shut up, Firebox! You don't define my life! That's right, you tell him, Toby. Boko, what about Ben? Do you think there's any surgeries that will be able to fix him? To be honest, I don't know, Bill. You might be a lost cause. But I don't want to lose my brother. <laughs> I just feel horrible for Ben, don't you, Clarabelle? Oh yes, Annie, I feel awful for him. And yet you two don't care about Thomas at all? You know he spent most of his time stuck in a shed worrying about you two? James, with all due respect, Thomas left us to die. Yeah, if he cared about us, why didn't he come to us during the blast? It just doesn't make sense, James. Are you two forgetting the fact that a fucking nuclear power plant exploded and decimated half the island? Thomas told us the entire story. He was trying to go back to you guys, but his driver prioritized saving himself over you guys. He would have gone for you if he could, but he spent like five days stuck in a shed with boulders covering the entrance. Not to mention during those five days or however long he was stuck there, he was probably worrying about you and worrying if you were even alive. James exploded at the coaches. Well, so he really does care, huh? And we were so rude to him just these past few hours. Oh shit. Guys, the monster's back! Wait, that radio broadcast said it's blind, right? Everybody, don't make a sound!
Ren, I... I don't think he's coming back. <coughs> then everyone heard two unfamiliar whistles. They didn't recognize the engines that pulled up. So you're the ones we've been looking for. I'm sorry, but who are you guys? I don't recognize you. Duh, where are my manners? I'm Jinti and this is Antov. We are Soviet Union engines. Hey, uh, Antov, was it? Don't I know you from somewhere? No, no. I've been getting that a lot, but no, I'm not here. Oh. No wait! Are you guys behind all of this mess? No, we are not. The nuclear power plant explosion was your own doing. You don't know how to properly handle nuclear power, unlike the rest of the world. Soviet Union became very rich off nuclear power. So did the Americas and other countries of the world. World peace is practically achieved. Your scientists didn't know how to operate that power plant properly! 50% power! The silver tank engine yelled. You're trying to get everyone killed. Duh. And now the Soviet strike and tragedy prevention team are here to try to dismiss this whole situation and cover it up. Because if that monster gets loose to Soviet Union, it could destroy the whole motherland, or even the whole world. So we're just doing everyone a favor. Nobody will miss your little railway anyways. You're too technologically behind. Okay, and do you mind telling us why you're explaining all of this to us now like some sort of James Bond villain reveal? Yeah, what Douglas said. It doesn't make sense why you would reveal your plans to us. Too many of your friends already escaped. We're here to make sure you don't. In few hours, Soviet nuke will destroy the island of Sodor. We're here to make sure no more engines escape. Too many have already. You aren't going to stop. Hey, let me go! I'm not letting my brother's death be in vain. You guys aren't going to stop us from getting out of here. Let me go! Right now! No! Never! Let me go right now! No! You aren't gonna stop me and my friends from escaping this place! And if we die, you're going with us! Jinti, get out of our way or I'll take you on myself! I'm not afraid of you! Is that so? Well then, bring it on, you stupid blue tank engine! Don't worry, Thomas, I've got your back! You stupid engines don't even know what you're doing! You're going to doom the whole world! If you're so smart, why didn't you just kill the beast instead of stopping us from escaping? Your plan doesn't work! Ah! 
and Tom, stop the other! Ha ha! it, bots! Oh shit! Stop it! You don't know what you're doing! You don't know what you're doing! You killed our friends, and now you're trying to cover up this whole problem. Why don't you see how it feels to be at the bottom? No! Damn, Thomas, that was hardcore. At least now they're dead. For all they did to us. Let's get back to the others and get on that ship before the island explodes. Bill, what are you just staying here for? Let's go! The... the... beast... Well... At least we got our friends out of here safely. James, no! Not again! Whoa, James, remember what Ben did! James, we didn't no, see stop him anymore. it! Stop it, please! James! Looks like I helped everyone after all. Quickly, <laughs> fuck, distracted! Frankie, quick, get us onto the ship! Hello, it's me. That incident near England is going to be causing a bit of problems. Don't worry about it. The Soviets covered it up. Let's just move ahead with the company proposal. They covered it up? Well, that's good. Guess we don't have to worry about it here. And make sure to get that proposal paper ready by tomorrow. It'll be ready. Goodbye, Mr. House.